This tutorial will demonstrate the ease in which eLab manages your samples and laboratory processes. We will use the example of producing sequences from a batch of plasma samples sent to us from an external customer. After logging on to eLab, samples are seamlessly imported by running the Import Wizard. Select the Microsoft Excel or text file that contains the information on the samples to import. It is common for files of this type to come in many different formats. This wizard accommodates many formats by allowing you to specify which columns and rows are relevant and to map different columns and values to different fields in the database. You can standardize these settings by creating templates. However, these will not be shown here. Here we are specifying which columns in the Excel file correspond with each field in the database. Note, the identifiers that your customers use can also be imported into the database. The wizard is now validating the data before importing it. Once imported, the data is displayed in a sample search results form. This form can also be used to find other samples already in the database. To send these samples to a new project, select the samples and click on Send to Project. As this project has not yet been created, we will create it from here by clicking on the New Project button. We will create a project called HPV Sequencing Project and choose a sequencing method to sequence the ACME research samples we just imported. The sequencing method was created in another tutorial and defines the order in which protocols can be performed. To assign which users or which groups of users have permission to perform each of the protocols that make up the sequencing method, we select them here. If we now click on the Projects tab and select the project we just created, we will see that the samples have been assigned to this project and have been sent to the first protocol in the sequencing method. At this stage, we can do some tasks or, as we will do in this case, we can log off and log on again later to do the work we just assigned. When we log back on, we see that we have been assigned 84 samples to do RNA extraction. These samples will also appear for every other user and for each member of a group that have been assigned to perform this work. To begin applying this protocol to these samples, we first set up the samples in our container. We add an appropriate container, select the samples, and then add them to the container. We also add a negative control and set a sample as a positive control. Next we choose the reagents we will add to the task, as specified in the protocol. Note: Non-standard reagents and different volumes can be added but will not be shown here. As reagents are added, they are removed from the list to avoid adding them twice. When all the samples and reagents have been added to each well, the validation icons will disappear, informing us that the task is compliant. These details can now be exported to Excel or an instrument by clicking on the Export button. In this case, however, we will print them for reference when we do the work manually. If all the wells have reagents in common, as in this case, this report can be simplified by clicking the Create Master Mix button. Once the task has been completed, we can send the tray to storage or onto the next protocol in the sequencing method. We will do the latter and begin setting up the next task. Here we will preserve the format of the existing container by clicking on the Container View button and adding the container directly to the new task. Again, we add the reagents. Note, there is a validation problem as the validation icon is present in the wells. To troubleshoot, hover over a well and examine the tooltip box. It informs us that the protocol specifies one microliter of water. The presence of the reagent in the list on the left also confirms it is missing from the task. In this task, three samples failed, so we will send these back to the RNA extraction worklist. 
As for the rest of the samples, we will send them on to be PCR'd. If we go back to the project tab, we can see a summary of the project, including the three samples that failed the cDNA conversion protocol. Also note these three samples are now in the RNA extraction worklist as we sent them back to this protocol. And the rest of the samples are in the PCR worklist. We continue doing work in this fashion until we have completed the project. At any stage we can attach results to the samples in the tasks. For example, PCR images, chromatograms and notes. Here we have just completed the sequencing protocol, the last protocol in the method and will attach the sequencing file results to the samples. Click on the results button and select the files associated with the samples. The sequencing results are now stored in the database. If we now go back to the project tab, we see the project is finished, minus a few problems we had with some of the samples at some stages of the sequencing method. To see how eLab works for you, go to ebiosis.com and download the fully functional free version today. This version allows you to use the system for up to 100 samples, after which you can purchase a license to continue managing more samples. For more information, visit ebiosis.com to see other tutorials, download the brochure and browse the extensive online help, or write to us at contactus at ebiosis.com.